In this video, we're going to practice analyzing mass spec data for, um, I think we have five mass specs. We're going to locate the M plus peak, the molecular ion peak in each spectrum, and use it to determine the molecular weight. We're going to determine if each of the spectrums corresponds to a molecule that contains a nitrogen, chlorine, or bromine. Remember, nitrogen atoms, if we have an odd number of nitrogen atoms in a molecule, that's going to give us an odd molecular weight, which will be an odd M plus peak, the M plus peak that corresponds to an odd mass number. Chlorine will give us an M plus two peak that's a third of the height of the M plus peak, and bromine will give us an M plus two peak that's about the same height as an M plus peak. And then we're also going to do some gap analysis. We're going to look at the gaps in the mass, in the peaks uh, in the mass spec, and see if we can get some information about what they tell us. Starting with the first spectrum, looking for the M plus peak. Remember the M plus peak is not the highest peak. It is the peak on the right hand side that has the greatest abundance. So we're gonna go over to the right hand side. We're gonna focus on the peaks that are on the right hand side. Find the peak that has the greatest abundance. There it is, this is our M plus peak. And this corresponds to the molecular weight, which is 114. So because this is 114, it's not an odd number. So we assume that we have no nitrogen present in this molecule. It is possible that we have two nitrogen present, but that's not very common. So if you have an even mass number, just assume that you don't have any nitrogen at all. Also, we don't even have an M plus two peak in this molecule. So no nitrogen, no chlorine, no bromine. In terms of analyzing the gaps, so we, I'm not gonna do this a lot because I don't really love analyzing the gaps because I don't really spend a lot of time trying to get structural data from a mass spec, but we could see that there's a pretty significant gap between 114 and this peak, which corresponds to 85. 114 minus 85 is 29, and 29 would correspond to like a CH3, CH2, an ethyl group. Uh, we also have We've got another gap right here. So this gap corresponds to 85 minus 71. That is a 14. That corresponds to a CH2 group. You know, none of this is really that surprising because we expect to have those types of groups present in our molecule. Let's move to our next spectrum. On this one, the, the M plus peak is the greatest, most abundant peak in the spectrum. That's sometimes that happens. If we're looking on the right hand side, we want to find the peak that has the greatest abundance. So that's this guy right here. This is our M plus peak, and it corresponds to 79 grams per mole because this is an odd number that tells us that we have nitrogen in the molecule. We don't have, or I guess maybe we kind of have an M plus two peak right there at 81, but not enough for us to pay attention to. So no chlorine, no bromine. We really only have one major gap in this particular spectrum, 79 minus 52, which corresponds to 27. Um, and that's a little bit harder for me to figure out what that could be, like a CH3. It's not a CH. Oh, CH3, CH would be a 27. Or, and we'll, uh, CH3, C, CH3, C, that's maybe something like this. Or maybe it could be a CH2, CH, something like that. It's kind of hard to tell what, um, what exactly that corresponds to. This next spectrum, you might like kind of have your eyes drawn to just this portion right here as being the M plus peak, but keep in mind that the axes on the mass spectrum, they adjust themselves to fit the data. So if these were the molecular ion peaks in the molecule, it would not continue to, to have an axis that continued all the way out to 175. If the axis goes this far, you better pay attention to what's going on out there. Those peaks are so tiny, but there they are. Uh, this, this mass spec is actually really difficult to analyze because of how low intensity all of these peaks are. These are actually M plus two peaks. Like we actually do have, if it's a little bit easier to see here 
and here, but we do have bromine present in this molecule. We have a uh, peak and another peak that is two units higher and they are equal intensity. So there's, there's our bromine again, and there's our bromine again, and there it is again, and then here we have it right there again. So this is, um, let's see what the tick marks are on this. This is 55, 60, 65, 70. So each one of these tick marks represent one. So this right here is our M plus two peak. That's really big. This is our M plus two peak. So that makes this guy our M plus peak which is 176. This is a real, like I said, this is a really difficult one to analyze because of how low intensity all those peaks are. And then because we have the M plus two peak that is equal in size, we have bromine present in the molecule. Uh, in terms of analyzing what these different peaks represent, like in terms of the gap, that's really difficult to do. <laughs> really difficult to analyze the gaps here. Um, but we could try to do this first drop off. So 176 minus this big peak right here is 96. Oh, that looks like 80. That's a bromine. Uh, and that's pretty normal to be able to see the loss of, of a halogen in, in our mass spec. We've got two more to go. So here's one. First, we're going to find the M plus peak. We want to look at the right-hand side, not the biggest peak in the spectrum, but the biggest peak on the right-hand side. So there's our M plus peak right there. And then notice we do have an M plus two peak in this, in this spectrum. And the relative height of the M plus and the M plus two peak tells us that we have chlorine in the molecule. The M plus peak is at 126 right there. Uh, looking at a gap, so our first gap here, 126, going down to 80, 85, 91. 126 minus 91 is 35. That's a chlorine. So again, losing that chlorine, just like we saw in the previous one, losing the bromine. We have one more to go. Again, keep in mind that the mass spec um, the the axis adjusts itself so don't be distracted by this keep looking look at this little tiny guy out here what do we have 25 125 130 35 140 140 um sometimes students will see you know something like this and they'll think oh does that mean that there's bromine there's two peaks that are two units apart that are roughly the same height that is only the case um, when those peaks are present over on the right hand side on the molecular ion side bromine isn't just going to magically appear itself in a small fragment in the molecule not to mention that bromine is heavier than these peaks in general but try to not analyze any sort of relative height pattern anywhere other than the very right hand side of the spectrum uh, in terms of analyzing gaps here, our first gap, 140 minus 125, that is 15. So that would be a CH3 group. That kind of makes sense. Um, yeah, and I guess that's, that's really, like I said, I don't really love analyzing the gaps, so I don't want to spend a ton of time on it.